I'm not doing introductions, this is already too long. I'm going to explain it to you here. This is the complete My Little Pony Generation 4 Iceberg. We're not talking about the comics, we're not talking about previous generations, just G4. There are five layers to my iceberg. The top layer is things everybody knows. People that have never seen the show before only barely heard about it. The second layer are things pretty much every fan knows. Anyone who's seen the show who's gotten into the fandom, they should know these things. The third layer is filled with things that really dedicated fans know. The fourth layer is the most obscure stuff I could find. And the fifth layer is anything that's going to be grim, sexual, or offensive. I'm splitting it up like this so people can enjoy this iceberg and learn more about the show and the fandom without having to hear about all the garbage stuff. It's also worth mentioning that I did not script this video. I'm doing this primarily from memory and looking up a few things if I'm unsure. Rest assured that everything will be factual, however. If something isn't correct, please correct me in the comments, I'd love to see it. Also, I forgot how to sound interesting for the first layer, so bear with me. Layer 1. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. The first episode aired on October 10th, 2010 and ran for a total of nine seasons, ending on October 12th, 2019. The show is smart, funny, a pleasure to look at, and amassed a huge following. The show has had a huge impact on thousands of people and internet culture as a whole. And this iceberg video, and everything I talk about in it, is a result of this show. Bronies. Bronies are adult male fans of the show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. However, it's been used as an umbrella term for really any fan of the show. Another popular term for female fans is Pegasisters. The term was coined by an anonymous 4chaner and has been used ever since. Anyway, I discovered that the first time the word bronies was ever used wasn't on 4chan in 2010, but instead it was first used in September of 2010 by some random Twitter account that simply tweeted out the word bronies. I can't believe this exists. I'm in disbelief. I don't know how. Anyway, I just thought that was worth a mention. Equestria Girls. A canon spin-off of the original show which takes place in a separate dimension where all the characters are humans. The first piece of Equestria Girls content was simply labeled Equestria Girls, a movie about how Twilight goes to the human world and tries to get the crown back to save her friends or whatever. It takes place directly after the events of season 3 and also had a brief runtime in movie theaters. The 2017 My Little Pony feature-length movie. In 2017, the My Little Pony movie was released in theaters. It featured celebrity voice actors, a different animation style, and had the characters go on adventures beyond Equestria. While it was canon within G4's lore, every character that was voiced by a celebrity never returned to the show. Guess why? Discord Remix. By far the most popular piece of Brony music, Discord Remix by The Living Tombstone had reached wide appeal within the fandom, However, in more recent years, it's become more mainstream throughout internet culture. It's a remix of the song Discord by Eurobeat Brony. Speaking of which, Brony music. The show inspired a lot of music from fans. Many talented creators got their rise from making My Little Pony songs, such as Living Tombstone and Eurobeat Brony. Lauren Faust. Lauren Faust is the creator of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. She left the show after season two, but she is still credited as the reason the show has such a wide appeal. Derpy. Derpy is a grey pegasus mare with a yellow mane. In the first episode, she can be seen with crossed eyes and scrunched face. Many fans noticed and started looking for her in the background of other episodes. She of course got the name Derpy from fans talking about her on 4chan. She loves muffins because she can be seen saying the word muffin in the background of one episode. You can't make it up, that's actually why she likes muffins. In the episode Winter Wrap-Up, she's called Ditsy Do, and in the episode The Last Roundup, she actually gets a speaking line and Rainbow Dash calls her Derpy. We'll get to all that later, but note that her canon name now is Muffins. MLP Board. 4chan was the primary board where fans originally discussed the show. It got a little too popular though, and there were so many people talking about it, so many people posting about it, that they banned ponies outright. Since the problem didn't go away, 4chan mods decided to make a board specifically for My Little Pony. To this day, it's the only board catered to one specific fandom. All right, we're already onto the second layer. This is where things get long. <laughs> we're gonna start it out with seasons one to four, the golden age of the show. Seasons one to three, or depending on who you ask, seasons one to four, are considered the golden age of the show in the fandom. It'd be a crime to say that the show was falling off in popularity around this time, but many remember this as the golden age. 15.ai 15.ai is a website that allows users to write out whatever they want 
and then have an AI generated voice say it out for them. The catch here is that the voices are made to resemble different characters from various TV shows, video games, etc. Also, real life. Anyway, the point is, Twilight and Fluttershy were the first two characters added to the website. PMVs, or Pony Music Videos. Yes, the P stands for Pony, nothing else. PMVs are essentially the Brony fandom's AMVs, or anime music videos. They can range from stealing clips from the show and stealing other people's music and putting them together into a video, or you can make a full-length animation and completely original music and it would still be considered a PMV. Pretty self-explanatory. Bronies React. Bronies React is a parody series of the Fine Brothers React show where they have various groups of people react to certain videos. One video had teens react to the My Little Pony intro, and by extension the Brony fandom. The YouTuber AC Racebest thought it'd be funny if Bronies reacted to teens react to My Little Pony, so he called up a bunch of famous Bronies and had them react to the video. At the time AC Racebest was a nobody, but now he's known for the series and it continues to this day. That brings us on to Brony YouTubers and horse fame. Honestly, I could make a whole iceberg video just talking about different people in the community, and I'm going to, trust me. Here's a short list of them, okay. The term horse fame applies to anybody who got famous for making pony content on the internet. Fim Fiction. Fim Fiction is a website where people share My Little Pony fanfics. That's it. r slash place dashy. In 20... <sighs> I have to explain r slash place. In 2017, on Reddit, there was an April Fool's event where they had a 1000 by 1000 pixel canvas that anybody could place on. Here's a link to Little Shy's video, I can't do this myself. I have to re-record this section anyway, because while I was making this video, Reddit announced r slash place again. And so, you know, yeah, I have to finish this part later. Okay, it's later now, and r slash place concluded a couple days ago. The Brony community managed to get 10 pieces, plus a small twilight. This was not as easy as it sounded. Our pieces of work got destroyed a total of 22 times according to, well, one of our pieces. We started with a saluting Dashi in our original spot but got beheaded by Ukraine, then we moved the derpy that we had down to where Hollow Knight was, and then Mizkif attacked it. It was this whole thing. Listen, I'm sure Little Shy will make a video eventually about this. Just, just wait around, subscribe to his channel, right? It's not gonna be me. 20% cooler. I'm really trying to not put in a lot of memes here, but I have to talk about 20% Cooler. In Season 1, during Rarity's song, Art of the Dress, she's pestering Rainbow Dash on how she wants her dress to look. Rainbow Dash tells Rarity that she wants it to be 20% Cooler. Since then, it became her catchphrase, first as a meme in the Brony community, but eventually finding its way back into the show many, many times. I should mention one of the main reasons this became such a big meme is because of a song by Ken Ashcorp. Go listen to it. Applejack's parents... Season 7, Episode 13, The Perfect Pair. Both in one. Okay, buckle in. So, the show staff wanted to have Granny Smith as a character because Granny Smith is an apple, and they wanted to have all the characters like named after apples because puns are funny, I guess. And so, Applejack and, you know, the whole Apple family, they just live with Granny Smith with no presence of, like, parents. And so a lot of fans are thinking, where, the, where, where are Applejack's parents? What happened to them? Are they dead? very popular headcanon by Ink Rose saying that they were murdered by Timberwolves in cold blood spread throughout the fandom and sort of just became the understood fact of how they died. But they still could technically be living in a ranch far, far away. It was never really confirmed that they died. So the theory remained open until Season 7, Episode 13, The Perfect Pair, where after seven years they finally address the question, where the hell are Applejack's parents? So William Shatner shows up and for some reason the kids start asking around town what happened to their parents because they don't know either. So the Apple kids ask around about their parents' wonderfully special and perfect hetero relationship. It's very cute, go watch it. Anyway, there's like very clear subtext that that their parents are just dead. And that's what Lauren Faust wanted apparently, I think she said that in, in a tweet one time. So in conclusion, Applejack's parents are dead because of a pun. They sent a child to hell. <laughs> So hell canonically exists in My Little Pony, it's a place called Tar Tar Us, according to Twilight Sparkle. And there's a couple baddies in there like T-Rex and the Bugbear and a few other innocent creatures. But at the end of Season 8, after they defeat Cozy Glow, who is working with T-Rex, uh, instead of like reforming her or like offering her a chance at redemption, they literally just throw this four-year-old child in hell. Hell to you! Yet the racist lives on. There was a theory that she was secretly chrysalis the whole time, but that didn't end up being a thing, so. Rainbow Dash's parents. 
Why did I say that with an accent? People wanted to see Rainbow Dash's parents for a long time as well, but less so because she didn't have a Granny Smith in her life. During a flashback in Season 3, she's seen standing on the head of a pony that looks like her dad, what with the rainbow mane, but apparently he's just her mentor? It's not her dad. Anyway, in Season 7, Episode 7, we get to see her real parents uh, in an okay episode, I guess. Season 7 really delivered. We got Applejack's parents, we got Rainbow Dash's parents, and we also got a Celestia and Luna episode. But to be fair, we also got Forever Philly, so, uh, you know. Flufflepuff! Flufflepuff is in a fan-made pony, which is basically just pink uh, ball of fluff. I don't know how else to describe them. They're roommates with Chrysalis, or maybe they're lovers, I don't know. They make cute little animated skits, and it's a joy for everybody. They're also responsible for the viral animated video, Pink Fluffy Unicorns Dancing on Rainbows. Everyone thinks that they wrote the song, but they didn't. Some other guy wrote it. Nobody knows his name, though, because he didn't put a cute pony on their screen, so. Scootaloo! is an orphan. Yeah, we're still on the parents bit. We don't ever see Scootaloo's parents nor where she lives, so she's probably an orphan and lives in the treehouse. It gets lonely here at night. This is, it's a meme, okay? A lot of these things are memes. I'm trying to avoid putting memes. It's a meme, okay? It's a joke. Haha, -ha, Scootaloo, orphan, funny, haha. -ha. Make fun of the orphan child. No parents, haha. -ha, lose. We finally get to see your parents in season nine because of course we do. And they're Australian. At the end of the episode, Scootaloo decides that she wants to be an orphan. Two Best Sisters Play. Two Best Sisters Play is an animated series by Two Snacks, where they take audio from the YouTube channel Two Best Friends Play and animate Celestia and Luna playing the games instead, and it's very good. Their animation stands out as some of the best created by any brony. On a tangentially related note, somebody pretended to be Two Snacks and attended a con, and people actually believed them until Two Snacks was like, hey guys, that's not me. Just thought that'd be fun to add. Rainbow Dash is worst pony. Whoop, oh, it's another meme. Oh, here we go. So Rainbow Dash is kind of hated among the fandom for being an egotistical piece of shit. At least in the newer episodes. In the older ones, people like actually liked her, and obviously people still like Rainbow Dash, but she's kind of a dick. Anyway, during the closing ceremonies at the last Brony Con in 2019, Saber Spark went up on stage and said Rainbow, Rainbow Dash, Dash really, really is worst is pony worst in front pony. of the entire 10,000 attendees. <laughs> then he got beat up by Dusty Cat. It was hilarious. YTP PMBs. On the iceberg I wrote Sunshine Celery Stalks and a Bass Flutter Shy's Ass because they're the most popular, but a better name for them would be YTP PMBs. YTP meaning YouTube Poop, PMV, Pony Music Video, you get the idea. Technically AFA isn't a YTP PMV, but it can sort of like be counted as one, maybe like a pioneer aspect, I don't know. I just felt like these songs should be on the list, alright? So here they are. Fallout Equestria. Fallout Equestria is like the Fallout games but with ponies. I'm pretty sure it takes place like thousands of years after the show takes place, but uh, I haven't read it because it's one of the longest self-written fanfics in existence. 620,000 words. Yeah, that's pretty big. You could buy paperback and hardback copies of some of the chapters, I think. And as a side tangent, let's talk about 2B2T, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. Somebody, because they're crazy, decided to rewrite Fallout Equestria in its entirety on Minecraft signs. Each Minecraft sign can hold about, wait, 60 letters? So they did thousands and thousands of signs, standing thousands and thousands of blocks on the server where anyone could destroy it. Pretty cool. Anyway, here's a video. Go watch it if you want. This this video's too long. I can't keep talking about 2B2T. Ponies, the anthology. Ponies, the anthology is a 7.05 part long series about memes. A bunch of horse famous creators all come together to make a bunch of memes and then they compile it into a one hour video or so. They're very funny and they're very popular and they're definitely not for kids. My Little Dashy, as well as Storm FX, why not? My Little Dashy is an angsty fanfic about a guy who finds a Philly Rainbow Dash in a box and raises her as her own, his own. We're special. It's just an ordinary brown cardboard box. Inside is a sleeping Philly Rainbow Dash. Storm FX adapted this fanfic into like a movie using their ponies in real life animation skills. The video garnered a lot of popularity and it became a very popular fanfic. It may have been referenced in the show when Rainbow Dash's dad refers to her as Our Little Dashy, but who really knows? Storm FX makes My Little Pony in real life videos. Also, sometimes JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> PlayStation Graphics. 
So in 2017, the My Little Pony movie released where they had Toon Boom 2D animation and it was beautiful, but all the background sets were made in 3D and they looked really bad. People joked that they looked like PlayStation 2 graphics, that's the joke. Nightmare Moon on the Hourglass. In the first episode of My Little Pony, Twilight walks past a big hourglass and you can see a little image of Nightmare Moon because that's who they were talking about at the time. And a lot of people did not see this until it was pointed out to them. Slash parentheses, the bro hoof. Popularized by a season wide episode where Applejack and Rainbow Dash fight to the death. The bro hoof. It's just a fist bump. It's, it's just a fist bump saying that, hey, I'm a brony, you want a bro hoof? They do it at cons, it was a lot of fun, 2013. Ah, the good old days. Okay, they weren't that good, I was depressed, but at least I had ponies. Online slash parentheses is how you bro hoof other fans of the show. That's it, now you know. Applejack and Rainbow Dash didn't actually fight to the death, I don't know why I said that. Real horses. For some reason, in the season finale of season one, Twilight uses a spell to turn mouse, mice, mousies, into like human, like horses. Like, like horses, like the horses we have in, in real life. Not ponies, like horses. This disturbed many people at the time. Also, while we're on this episode, here's Cyclops' poem. <sighs> you knew it was coming. More to twy, baby! This was a stupid joke in 2011 that blew up again in recent years for some reason. Basically, it's a ship between Mordecai from the show Regular Show and Twilight. This image became very popular and they sing uh, airplanes in the night sky or like shootings. Posting the lore. And also now this is a mainstream meme, so I have to keep hearing about it. Background ponies. That's it, that's a lot to explain. Just a lot of background ponies. All right, here's a list of unnamed background ponies that the fan gave, gave, fandom gave names to. Here we go. Okay, we'll talk about the important ones later, but know that the fandom had an obsession with the ponies in the background. They had names, they had voices, they had backstories, they had relationships, they were dating, I mean, they were gay. One of them was a fucking human. The Hub Network and Discovery Family. The Hub Network was what Hasbro streamed their shows on and it shared a birthday with My Little Pony. Anyway, in like 2014, they changed it to Discovery Family, which is a much lamer name in my opinion. The MLP Manga. There was an MLP manga release to appeal to all the anime weebs in the fandom. I said to myself, when I became an adult and I had an income, I would purchase them and read them. I have yet to do that. People like it and the art is very charming. Episode 100, Slice of Life. In the fifth season, the hundredth episode of My Little Pony aired, titled Slice of Life, written by M.A. Larson, where basically they made every fan headcanon about the background ponies canon. There were a lot of fun references and I could gush about this episode for ages, but I won't. I will tell you two things. Kid Batowski reference that nobody got, and for some reason, Gummy gets more characterization here than the entire show. Why? I do want to mention that they did include the dude from the Big Lebowski, and his cutie mark is a rug. Go watch the Bronies react for this one, it's pretty funny. Bronies, the extremely unexpected adult fans of My Little Pony. So there's two notable documentaries about Bronies, one made by Saber Spark called The Brony Chronicles, and one made by f***ing John Delancey. It's pretty cool. I don't know if it really helped a whole lot of people understand bronies, but it's there. A couple years ago, it be finally became free to watch again on YouTube, on John Delancey's YouTube channel. Anyway, I want to draw attention to the song that he sang about bronies. It's pretty catchy, but he does say the word clop. We'll get to that at the end of the iceberg. This will not be the first time that show staff are involved in weird okay? Get ready. Equestria Daily. Equestria Daily is a website where bronies can go daily to look at things that happen in the fandom. Mostly it's just art, but occasionally you get a news article about how Sunset Shimmer is bisexual. And there's also polls. Pony Life! Pony Life is uh, sort of like Generation 4.5. Very fast-paced show featuring the main cast and the main cast voice actors, except Kathy Westluck as Spike. I never watched it, it didn't look good, so, uh, there's a couple funny bits that became memes. BronyCon, as well as just conventions. Many pony-centered conventions have sprouted up across the world, celebrating the show, the fandom, the art, the animation, the music. I mean, you, you gotta know what a convention is, I don't really need to explain it to you. There's a couple fun things that happen in each of them, like Unicon being a mess, wait, that's on the list later, hold on, can't talk about that yet. There's a couple fires at one of them, John Delancey filmed a documentary at one of them, there's this whole debacle with the pizza, wait, no, that was furries. They were a lot of fun, and a lot of them still continue to this day, but the biggest one, BronyCon, 
announced they would hold their last one in 2019, and they reached 10,100 attendees. That broke their record for the 2015 one, which was just 10,000. Animation errors. So the show's animated in Flash, which if you don't know, it's a very streamlined way of animating. Oftentimes it looks terrible, but My Little Pony did it really well. Anyway, it's very prone to animation errors that they don't always catch. Here's a few highlights. That's it. It happens. Leaks. Hasbro's known for their wonderful internet security. Over the years, many fans have broken in and leaked things, such as the Gen 5 leaks, as well as I think the entirety of season 8, or at least an early version that had like no music. It's really weird to watch, but hey, free uh, free episodes early, right? It's also a leak of a bunch of early scripts, which I really wish I got my hands on. I don't know where to get them anymore. I really want to read them, but it, technically it's illegal to own. So, you know, it's a risk. Among those leaks were like show Bible, uh, the pilot, concepts for old characters, a lot of things that we weren't supposed to know, and we'll get to them if they're important. Derpy was censored slash save Derpy. So Derpy became very popular in the fandom very quickly, and in season two, they actually called her by name. Rainbow Dash really called her Derpy, and her eyes were crossed, and everyone freaked out when this happened. Positively. Like, the fans loved this, but a couple parents were like, oh, that's offensive. You can't, you can't show that on a kid's show. So they censored it. They took out Rainbow Dash calling her Derpy, they uncrossed her eyes a little bit, and we never got Derpy content again until, like, slice of life actually there's a there's a long period of time where we just didn't see derpy at all on the show we were afraid she was never going to come back but then miraculously in a season four episode uh derpy filled in for rainbow dash after she broke her neck there's more to those probably but i'm moving on applejack can't read so she's like a farm pony right uh, so, despite the fact that she reads, like, multiple times throughout the series, obviously she's just using her imagination, and she can't actually read. I mean, look, she tries to read that scroll upside down. Idiot. Stupid. Silly pony. I hope you guys can tell when I'm describing a meme. Pink-haired Celestia. So, this could- this actually could mean a couple things. Uh, her toy used to be pink because Hasbro thought that appealed to little kids, but all it did was confuse them because she's uh, white in the show. It also refers to how in the first episode, that little storybook bit, uh, she has pink hair, so people theorize that when she was younger, her hair was pink. Also, one more thing that we'll talk about at the very end of this iceberg. Let's fly to the castle. Let's fly to the castle. Melodic Pony. Okay, so most of the things on here are jokes, they're not really meant to be taken seriously. And I encouraged you to watch a lot of things already, but at the top of the list of things you need to check out is Melodic Pony's channel. Melodic Pony made seven, six uh, musical pieces before they f***ing died. It's weird to see like online creators dying because the internet's young enough that people don't die from old age. Uh, so it's always like a tragic young death. They were 27 when they died, and that puts them in the 27 club, technically. Anyway, go check out their channel, listen to all their tracks. Uh, my favorite by far is Return of Harmony. It's so, it's so good. The comics. I said at the beginning of this video that I wouldn't talk about the comics because I never read them and I know nothing about them, but they exist. They are based off the Gen 4 characters, series, blah, 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 world. There's a bunch of alternate universes, I think, and... That's all I know. Little Cheese. Little Cheese is Pinkie Pie's son that she had with Cheese Sandwich, the character voiced by Weird Al. Yeah, that one. Scootaloo is a chicken. Apple Bloom makes a joke that Scootaloo's a chicken in the episode Stairmaster, and it became a meme and a running gag for some reason. The thing is, Scootaloo can't fly. So calling her a chicken, the flightless bird, is like a really terrible insult. <laughs> Anthropology. You may know anthropology as the study of what makes us human. Baronies know anthropology as the fanfic where a uh, background pony named Lyra uh, goes to, through a portal uh, and becomes a human. Okay, she doesn't go through a portal. Celestia like does a spell or something. Uh, anyway, this was written before Equestria Girls came out, I think. I don't think. I know. I just looked it up. Do you want to know what this story was inspired by? This story was inspired by a approximately four second clip where Lyra sits down like a human. Remember what I said about the fandom making headcanons about background ponies? This is one of them. This is one of them. This is when Bronies decided that Lyra was obsessed with humans because she sat down weird. 
once in the background of an episode for four seconds. Why does it work? Why does it work? Why does she, her wanting to be a human work so well? Brayburn is gay. Unlike Rainbow Dash being gay, which that theory stems from the same episode Brayburn which introduced. So I guess people would just have a really gay mindset going into this episode. I don't know why Brayburn's gay. I guess he just looks gay. A lot of people spread the word and now he's just gay. So Brayburn's gay. Every pony's gay for Brayburn. Pony Creator. Among the various Flash games that were purged, uh, Pony Creator was one of them. It was a very popular site where you could construct your own character, your own original character or OC. I made my OC using that site back in 2016, since then it's been slightly updated. Okay, I don't know why this is on the list. You're Gonna Go Far Kid. There's a video where someone pitched up the song You're Gonna Go Far Kid by The Offspring and made a PMV out of it with Rainbow Dash, and it was very popular, and that's that's it. I don't know why this is on the list. The Twycane. This was a prop that Discord summoned for Twilight in Season 4, and it immediately became a meme, and since then it's popped up in the show in the background a couple times. I, I know it was in Slice of Life, and probably a few other episodes, I don't remember. Pink Fluffy Unicorns Dancing on Rainbows. Okay, we already talked about this. Twilightlicious. Black Griffin wanted to animate this cute little video, and so we got Tara Strong to make a Twitter recording of her saying, I'm the T to the W-I, L-I-G-H-T, and ain't no other pony trolling down like me, I'm Twilightlicious. And then he animated it, and then he uploaded a video to YouTube, and it blew up, and then he did a bunch of sequels, and then eventually it got into the show where Apple Bloom did a little song to the same tune and ended it with, I'm Apple, and she was gonna say Licious, but it got cut off by the plot. Unicorns are the master race. I thought I would talk about this in like the racism segment that we're gonna get to, but that I figured it'd be too long, so I'm talking about Unicorns Master Race here! Here we go! Basically, there's a whole episode revolving around how Applejack does too much work, it's the fourth episode. And then, and then once she finally accepts help from all her friends, Twilight is seen lifting like an entire orchard of apples, just in like three seconds, with her horn and her magic, and people are like, oh my god, Applejack spent like hours to do that same amount of work and Twilight just did it instantly. They they're they're overpowered. They're the goddamn master race. Because of course race is involved. I also think people think they're the master race because Canterlot is the you know the capital city is like mostly unicorns, so I also think it tied into that whole PC master race meme, which is still kind of an ongoing meme. Sort of combining that with unicorns and yeah. Memes, am I right? The mobile game. I forgot to add this one, so it's not in the image. But don't worry, I'm talking about it here. Okay, so the mobile game, it's pretty simple. It's just one of those games where you log on every day, and then you click some buttons and like collect all your stuff that you earned, and then you log off, and then you'll probably only play for a month. But hey, if you play for 10 years, you'll have a pretty cool, pretty cool world. I played the game back when it came out, and I haven't played since. The Christmas Music Album slash Days Gone By. So one year, I think it was 2018, they had a whole Christmas special episode coming out, and they also made a Christmas album. Except it wasn't heartwarming, like the in-universe show, it was Christmas. The songs were about Christmas, they said Christmas, it was weird. Like religious undertones that just make me uncomfortable. The album's kind of boring, but there is one notable song called Days Gone By, which is a parody of Auld Lang Syne. Uh, all of the songs were parodies uh, of other songs, like Silent Night. Actually, I think there was one original song. But anyway, this was a parody of the song, and it was beautiful, and it was about how they're unable to spend the holidays with their parents because they're dead. Brings a tear to my eye every time, and that also marks the end of the second layer. Yeah. Yeah. 25 minutes for this layer. Okay, I, there's a few things I want to say before we get onto the third layer, and I don't feel like putting them in the description of this video, so here they are now. So Mordetari really belongs on the first layer, but I don't feel like changing it. Uh, Melodic Pony belongs on the third layer. I don't feel like changing it. Also, uh, I hope you like Deltarune music. <laughs> Since I have the game downloaded, the, you know, it's already on my computer, so I just... I don't have to get more music. It was just really easy, so I don't know if I'm gonna continue that for the rest of the video, but who knows. Also, sorry you can hear my... ...mouse the whole video, and also me breathing, which is sort of cut out by the music, but... Oh my god, that is bothering me so much. Okay, I've taken too much of your time. And this popcorn's getting cold. 
Layer 3. The date is April 1st, and I am now recording the third layer of the iceberg. And because it's April 1st, our slash place has just opened back up again, and Dashi's head got cut off by Ukraine. Alright, let's get into it. The ride never ends. I want to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride. You've gotten to the point where you're a fan of My Little Pony, and there's no escape. You're stuck here for the rest of your life. The ride never ends. How long is a moon? Characters in the show often use moons as like a timekeeping thing, but we never like get an answer as to how long a moon exactly is. There's also conflicting evidence as to how long it is. You know, this episode suggests that it's this long, but these episodes suggest that it's actually way shorter or way longer. If you would like to know how long a moon is in My Little Pony, I have a video on my channel explaining it. You just have to accept that the fourth episode isn't canon. Thank you. Granny Smith is impossibly old. Granny Smith apparently founded Ponyville, which would make her like hundreds of years old. Tree corpses in health of information. There's a season episode where Zakor is like trying to get this thing for Fluttershy, and she ends up getting this disease, which will apparently turn her into a tree and kill her. But in the opening scene, there's a bunch of these trees that she's apparently going to turn into. Are those trees dead ponies? The MLP board's 4chan cup. 4chan holds an event where most of the boards, I think all of the boards, hold a FIFA competition. The MLP board was the first to get two stars, and it made everyone mad. I could probably go over like each of their players, but this was a 4chan event, so maybe for the bottom of the iceberg. Spike is Twilight's son. So Spike was in an egg, and then Twilight used a spell to hatch him, so is Spike technically like her son? Fame and Misfortune. Fame and Misfortune is a season 7 episode written by M.A. Larson, who at this point we thought had left the show. Well, he did. He just came back to write this episode. The episode was about the main six publishing a journal of their adventures, and what transpires is essentially what would happen if bronies invaded Equestria. Suddenly, background ponies were now fans of the show and were arguing that Twilight was better before she got wings and that Rarity was worse pony. This was a very meta episode and sort of like a middle finger to the fandom almost. M.A. Larson expressed that he didn't really like how this episode was and how it ended, which didn't end with a happy ending. It ended in chaos. No resolution. It's a pretty funny episode, but a lot of people have mixed feelings about it. I guess now's a good time to talk about M.A. Larson. M.A. Larson is simply one of the writers for the show, and he wrote such episodes as Sonic Rain Boom and Magical Mystery Cure. He's definitely my favorite writer on the show, not just for, you know, making really good episodes, but also just for being a really funny, chill guy that attends conventions and really interacts with the fandom. Anyway, he's a bit of a meme after he gave Twilight Wings and Magical Mystery Cure, which technically wasn't really his decision, but he's a meme regardless. Rarity is a marshmallow. So in case you haven't noticed, Rarity is white. She kind of looks like a marshmallow, doesn't she? Mm, bananas! This is a quote from a YouTube video where Celestia sends uh, people to the moon, because Celestia sending people to the moon is a meme. Feeling good as hell. So remember that Pony Life series that they had? So they announced it by announcing the toy line with an ad that included the song Good As Hell by Lizzo. Great song, not so great lyrics for a kids show. I don't know how this passed, but eventually they took down the ad because it featured a quote unquote swear word. This whole ad is just scuffed as hell. Uh, I, yes, I just realized what I said. The movie Playing With Fire. So I don't know anything about this movie other than John Cena is in it, and there's a lot of My Little Pony merchandise like used in the background for some kid's birthday party, and there's a gif of John Cena ripping a t-shirt with Celestia on it. Slenderman. So Slenderman's a popular creepypasta character from like 2010. He had a whole game made about him, and then people were like really into it. So in the episode Pinky Apple Pie, an animator decided to sneak in a Slenderman into the background for like four frames. When people noticed, they shared screenshots around, but there were so many people that looked at the episode back and still didn't see it and thought it was fake. But when they realized it was real, Mr. Poninator. Mr. Poninator was an old school animator for the fandom. Many gave him the title of the fastest animator in the fandom with how often he would post new animations. He was very popular, but unfortunately most of the videos are either unlisted, privated, or just gone off his original channel. A 15-year-old brony wrote the episode Keep Calm and Flutter On. 
So this one's a bit of a misconception. I'm gonna read directly off the wiki here. Story writer Teddy Antonio states that he had written the premise and outline for the episode when he was 15. In addition, at least the beginning and first act of the episode were written differently in Antonio's draft. So, not entirely true, but it is a fun lie. Friendship is magic in other media. So there's a whole wiki article dedicated to uh, MLP appearing in other shows, so I'm just gonna read a little bit of that. The Amazing World of Gumball, Animation Domination HD, The Aquabats Super Show, Bob's Burgers, Chicago Fire, The Cleveland Show, The Colbert Report, uh, Comic Book Men, The Chase, The Crazy Ones, DC Legends of Tomorrow, Double Dare, DuckTales, Fish Hooks, Full Frontal with Samantha B, High School, DXD, Boar N, Hot in Cleveland, Hub World, Jeopardy, yeah, Jeopardy, I remember that one, Joel's Brother, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Literalist Pet Shop, obviously, Mad, a lot of stuff in Mad, Modern Family, The Neighbors, The Patrick Star Show, Patton Oswalt, Talking for Clapping, Peacemaker, Penguins of Madagascar, Pound Puppies, Powerhouse Girls, Robot and Monster, Robot Chicken, Saturday Night Live, she and the Princess of Power, what are you talking about? Sparkle and Shimmer? I guess that counts. Because I'm a fan of She-Ra, so... Anyway, The Simpsons, you see... you So you think you can dance, Sonic Boom, Super, Super Bowl Rally. Oh, that was a Super Bowl commercial. I thought about adding that to the list, but I didn't. The Superhero soup, the superhero soup sh Squad Show, The Teen Titans Go, Totally Spies, The Toys That Made Us. There's a whole episode dedicated to that. AC Race Best was in it. Transformers, Robots in Disguise, Uncle Grandpa, The View, Word Girl. Movies, Black Widow, Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, Deadpool 2, Jet... Jat and Juliet, Jen, Jem and, Hol and the Holograms, Stephanie, The Lego Movie, Playing With Fire, Ted 2, Transformers, Age of Ex Extinction, Comics, Archie, CRFH, Furry Experience, Cyanide and Happiness, Fanboys, Foxtrot, Gold Digger, I can't pronounce that, uh, it's Japanese, I think, Hayati and, Hay Hayat and the Combat Butler, Gem and the Holograms, Knights of the Dinner Table, no matter how I look at it, it's your guys' fault, I'm not popular, Phobia and her Unicorn, Scooby-Doo Team-Up, Transformers, VG Cats, Video Games, Adventure Quest, Binding of Isaac, Borderlands 2, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, what? Crisis 3, Diablo 3, Dungeons and Dragons Online, Dungeons and Dreadmore, Fallout 4, Family Guy, The Quest for Staff, Firefall, FTL, Faster Than Light, Heroes of the Storm, Injustice 2, League of, League of Legends, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic 2012 Games, what? Hold on. They reference Rainbow Dash. Bruh. Merch Quest. Minecraft. Yeah, they do. Monopoly Hotels. Octodad. De 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 Deadliest Catch. Roblox. RuneScape. Scribble Knots Unlimited. Skullgirls. Team Fortress 2. Of course they do. Terraria. I know. Even... I don't... Ooh. Is the... Is the turtle included here? The flying animation for the turtle pet. No, they don't have it. That's that's a secret secret reference nobody gets. War Thunder, Watch Dogs, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, The Annoying uh, Web Series, The Annoying Orange, Co Code Meant, The Completionist, Death Battle, Helsing, Ultimate Abridge, uh, Numb Piece, Nostalgia Critic, Naruto, Phoenix Wright, uh, Rooster Teeth, Smosh, Studio C, We the Economy, Yu-Gi-Oh, Others, Other, Chili's, Firefox, Gaia Online, Google Hangout, Hanky Husky, Instant Buttons, JetBlue, Lenovo, Xbox, YouTube, 2014 Tony Awards, TBS, Transformers, and that's the entire list. Guess what? It's not complete. There was a small little drawing of Twilight in a Rick and Morty bit on YouTube, the one where also had uh, the Gravity Falls character. <gasps> I'm out of breath. Also, Storage Wars. Forgot about that one. And the Steve Harvey Show, a series brownie. best was on it. And there was also a crossover with Magic the Gathering. Listen, this <laughs> this list I read off was incomplete. Holy tweets from the show staff. Like I said earlier, the show staff get involved in weird sh And Twitter is like the main factory of weird sh that they say. Mostly it's just Lauren and Tara, but a few others get in there sometimes. The Pinky Clones are alive. A popular theory following the Too Many Pinkie Pies episode was that they didn't zap all of the Pinkie Pies, and some escaped. And this was later confirmed in the episode Saddle Row Review. That's not the right episode, whatever, we're moving on. Where another Pinkie Pie can be seen in the background. I think that was the right episode, actually. I looked it up, I was right, ha <laughs> ha Billy and Mandy predicted bronies. So if you're wondering why Billy and Mandy wasn't on that list, I just spout it off to you, it's because they referenced bronies before they existed. There was an episode where one of the characters got really involved in this pony show that was meant for kids, and that's it. The Dead Timelines. 
In the season 5 finale, Twilight follows Sifu dinner into her time portals, and every time Sifu messes up Rainbow Dash's race, Twilight goes back to an alternate reality where the main six didn't exist. These timelines, what happens to them? Do they disappear? Are they ongoing? How many ponies have you killed, Twilight? And while we're on this episode, it's worth mentioning all the World War II references in that one timeline. Yep, that's something that happened in the show. Whoa, Nelly. While it's one of Applejack's catchphrases, it's also the name of this character. Completely unique body type to any other character in the show. Also, a poster of her appears in Rainbow Dash's locker. Or maybe that was just a regular locker. I don't remember. Reminder that I'm doing this entire list from memory and barely ever looking anything up. But be sure, everything is factually accurate. I've made sure of that. The first natural born alicorn. So there was this book that was supposed to be canon called Journal of the Two Sisters. I own it, I could read it right now, I don't want to. That used to be canon until season six premiere and then out comes an alicorn baby. To which Luna has to say, the birth of an alicorn is something Equestria has never seen. Ah! Implying that Celestia and Luna were not natural born alicorns. What? So then, who is? How the f did you get the- How did you become an alicorn? Is this all like a thing with Star Swirl? Like, I'm just trying- I'm just reeling my mind here. We never get an answer for this. Shipping. And cannon shipping. Oh. Century. Oh. Twilight and Flash is actually a canon ship, while Twilight and Sunset Shimmer is just a regular ship. Brony Square. The f is Brony Square? Brony Square, or also Pony Square, is one of the fandom's largest running social networks and roleplay sites, and it shut down five years ago. BronyMate.com. I know what this one is. It's a scam. It's not a real dating website. There's a lot of these similar websites out there, like Furry Mate, I think it's called. They're just they're just dating websites for niche communities. And it's a scam. Alright, you have to pay to like use the site or like see messages that people send you, but there's no real people. Audio dramas. So like a fanfic, but like spoken with audio. Like an audiobook, but a fanfic. That's what an audio drama is. Anthropology is probably the most famous one. Derpy Boru. It's like the everything site. Mostly it's for image sharing, but there's also fan fiction, general discussion, pony discussion, role playing, stuff like that on the site. Some of the top images right now are the pixel art that we're using for r slash place, and it looks like two people's OCs. One of them looks, uh, like morbidly pregnant, like in fl Friendship as Witchcraft. Friendship as Witchcraft is an 8, 9, 10 part abridged series of My Little Pony. It has its own voice acting, its own original music and songs, which are incredible, as well as the script just being freaking amazing and hilarious, and it's very well known for those things. Originally, it was just eight parts, but then they made like a ninth part to make fun of Snowdrop, which is an animation that I probably talked about, and then a tenth part that they just have a script reading of at one of the cons. I guess there's also Horsewomen, the abridged series of Equestria Girls, which only has one part. This abridged series is not kid-friendly. Kevin the Changeling. In Slice of Life, during the wedding ceremony, there was a single changeling that was just chilling there during the wedding. His name is Kevin. Minuet is a regeneration of the Doctor. Uh, apparently the Doctor like regens, and because Minuet has the same cutie mark as the Doctor Who's character, uh, people say she's a regen of the Doctor. Ah, finally, we're here once at last. Racism. Racism is a bit of a hot topic in My Little Pony. It all started in season one with the episode Bridal Gossip, where they had Zakora come on as a character where all the ponies were afraid of her because they had misconceptions about zebras. The ponies were like really racist early on, I don't know what was up with that, but we never saw zebras or buffalo again because zebras were obviously a reference to Africans and buffalo were obviously a reference to Native Americans and that was a little bit too on the nose. So when they tackled it again, they instead used like griffins and sleep ponies and dragons. Less stereotypy, definitely a better angle. Of course, there's also just racism between the three pony races, uh, as told by Heartswarming Eve. There's this one character that's like overtly racist towards uh, the griffins and dragons and whatnot, and he gets reformed, but as previously mentioned, Cozy Glow goes to hell. Do you imagine if they reformed him after he said that shit to zebras and buffalo? Think about it. It's gak gak gak. 
It's Gak, Gak, Gak. Gak is just some toy that's like goo that you like squeeze and play with. Uh, it glows in the dark. It's stretchable and squeezable and something poppable stuff. It's Gak, Gak, Gak. It became a meme because bronies noticed how often the Gak ad kept playing back in like 2012, 2013. I was there. Right, I was there for the GAC commercials. I was watching the season 3 premiere of My Little Pony. And these commercials, the same 30 second commercial, would play back to back. GAC to GAC. Seriously. And it was like, the GAC commercial was like two commercials in one. Because it was, it's GAC, GAC, GAC over here. And then you thought it was over, but no, it's glow in the dark GAC. And now it's glowing in the dark and it feels like two ads in one. And then you put two of those ads next to each other. It feels like four GAC ads in a row. You would pretty much be guaranteed two of the same GAC ads for one commercial break. Seriously. I, I don't know why that, that was the only ad that was playing. That's the only one I remember. Button Mash and Hasbro ruining our fun. Button Mash was a background character that the fandom obviously gave characterization to. Button Mash was a gamer. He was in love with Sweetie Belle and liked juice boxes. And his mom, people liked his mom. So Jan Animation Studios decided to make this like short series called Button Mash's Adventures where it was like really well animated show style animation about Button Mash and his mom and like the squabbles they would have and Hasbro shut it down. This isn't the only thing that Hasbro shut down with a DMCA or whatever the f they call it, but this one was like the most popular. It hit the hardest. Cease and desist. That's what I'm thinking of. Same thing they gave to uh, Fighting Is Magic. Where is that on the list? It's it's directly under it. Fighting Is Magic. Fighting Is Magic was a fan-made fighting game featuring the main six, where they would fight each other. It had beautiful animations. It had a really solid game mechanics, and Hasbro decided that. They didn't want it to exist. It got shut down, and they couldn't work on the project anymore, unfortunately. However, this story does have a good ending. You see, Lauren Faust caught wind of this sad news, and she was like, Hey, you guys want six original characters based off the main six to make your game with? And they were like, Yeah, obviously. So, Lauren Faust made six original characters, all based off the main six and they designed their game around those characters, one of which was actually voiced by Terry Strong. Looks like it's time for a yeah. The game now is called Them's Fighting Herds. It's available on Steam, and people play it at cons all the time. They also mentioned the music. The music in Fighting is Magic was amazing, and the music in Them's Fighting Herds is also amazing. So the whole experience is just incredible. Who are Luster Dawn's parents? Luster Dawn is a character introduced in the very last episode of My Little Pony as Twilight's protege. Protege? Protege? Proto... How the f*** do I... Protege. Many fans theorize that Luster Dawn must be the child of Starlight Glimmer and Sunburst. The Sunburst ship. That's the most popular theory, that's the one I believe, but also I ship Starlight with Trixie, because they're gay. So, rad. Brad is the fan-given name to the character Flash Sentry from the Equestria Girls movie. Why Brad? I'm glad you asked! It's because he's- that's a very boring name. For a very boring character that everybody hates. Stellar Eclipse. Stellar Eclipse is the name of an OC that appeared in the show with a speaking role. This OC belonged to a Make-A-Wish kid whose wish was to be in the show. I wish this story ended there, but unfortunately there was some controversy after the internet does what it does best. Ruin things. We'll talk about it more later. Midnight Strike. Midnight Strike is the name of an OC that appeared in the background of the season three episode, Wonderbolt Academy. This was the first time an OC appeared in the background and it made the fandom flip out. That's it, moving on. Celestia loves cake. This is just a popular meme that spread from an episode that suggested that Celestia had a problem eating cake. Equestria is run by an authoritarian government. So Celestia is the ruler of all of Equestria, and no one else really has any say, right? Like, she's the queen. Whatever she says goes. So technically, it's uh, authoritarian, right? Fallout Equestria is canon. Okay, I let one stupid theory slide into this. Obviously, the fanfic about nuclear warfare in Equestria isn't canon, but they did reference it in the show. At the end of season nine, the Pegasi like closed the clouds. Apparently that's a Fallout Equestria reference. Again, I don't know Fallout Equestria. Nick's posting. 
Next is this black and purple OC that people like to post around, and when you post pictures of her, it's considered Nyx posting. There's really not that much else to it. You know, Lauren Faust might be a Nyx poster. It's just a theory. Cider is alcoholic. The episode Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000 is banned in some countries. So the episode Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000 is banned in some countries because in pretty much every country outside of America, cider is considered alcoholic. When I say considered, I mean it's, it is. It's just straight up alcoholic. And considering that Rainbow Dash legitimately eats dirt because she wants to taste some, like, Dash is an alcoholic. I mean, that's, that deserves a spot on the iceberg itself. It's a shame the episode is banned. That song is so good. Okay, it says right underneath on my list, it says Dash is alcoholic. You know why. Fan-made episodes. Okay, so there's a lot of fan-made episodes. Honorable mentions are Double Rainboom, Project Thundercloud, and Dusk's Dawn, the best one. <laughs> the Smooze. The Smooze is a purple blob that was a villain in Generation 1 of My Little Pony. But in Generation 5, it's a green blob. Did I say 5? I meant 4. I don't know why I said 5. The Smooze is a meme. Sad My Little Pony. Sad My Little Pony is a very low effort video with an absurd amount of views on YouTube. It's like three minutes long. It's just a slideshow of like ponies sitting by graves and like crying and stuff with like sad music playing over it. And it just hit the YouTube algorithm and pretty much every brony from like 2014, 2013 has seen this video because it has millions and millions of views. Death Battle. Death Battle is a series that pits fictional characters against each other in battles to the death and then animates them. So far, we've had Rainbow Dash vs. Starscream, Pinkie Pie vs. Deadpool, the only one that's ever ended in a draw, by the way, and Twilight vs. Raven. Rainbow Dash won, Pinkie Pie was a draw, and then Twilight, I think, died to Raven. I only saw the last video once, so... You may have actually heard me say Death Battle when I was listing the MLP and other media thing. The character, Surprise. Surprise was an early concept design for Pinkie Pie, where she would be white with a yellow mane, still look the same as Pinkie Pie though, and have wings. She was going to be a Pegasus. And her name was going to be Surprise, obviously. It didn't happen though. Baronies the Musical. There was a time when there was a real Baronies the Musical show that they were like actually performing. The songs still exist. They're hard to find, but you can get them for free on YouTube. I obviously never seen the show, and I didn't listen to all the songs because I didn't really like the first one I heard, so I gave up. Can you tell I only learned about this recently? The elements of harmony are the Kabbalah tree. This is some religion stuff. Apparently the elements of harmony and the tree of harmony is like a religious symbol that I think Buddhists use. I don't know. The Lost Flash games. Back in the day, Hasbro held a website where you could play various My Little Pony related Flash games. Uh, my favorite being Adventure Ponies. It was a very good pixel game. Anyway, Flash got shut down in December 2020, I believe, and those games are now gone. At least the Flash versions. I'm pretty sure you can still play them. Oh no, it's Iron Will. Oh no, it's Iron Will. <laughs> Stephen Hawking, watch out, it's Iron Will. Milky Way and the Galaxy Girls. Milky Way and the Galaxy Girls was a concept show that Lauren Faust had created, and when she pitched it to Hasbro, it got turned down, because it was GARBAGE, probably! I'm just kidding, but I'm glad it was turned down, because now we have My Little Pony. And that's what I've been doing with my life. Fake leaks. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Over the years, there's been a couple fake leaks about things that were gonna happen to My Little Pony, but didn't, because they were fake. If I'm being honest, I know more about fake Smash Brothers leaks than fake My Little Pony leaks, so if you want to hear more about it, look it up yourself, lazy ass. But if you want to hear about the Grinch leak, stick around. The Bohemian Owl. So in the episode Owl's Well That Ends Well, Spike is reading a book about owls to try and like get back at it or whatever. And for some reason on the cover, there's a Bohemian Owl. This is a really odd thing to put in a kid's show. Is it like subliminal messaging? The voice actors cursing in character. So among the real leaks that were released was a bunch of tr audio tracks that were supposed to be trashed but were kept by Hasbro of the voice actors swearing and saying not safe for work things in character. There should still be a YouTube video up of the highlights. I highly recommend you check it out. Starlight Glimmer is Amon. Gus. Amon is the main villain in the first season of The Legend of Korra. His whole plan is to rid benders of their bending to bring equality. 
sounds similar to Starlight's plan to rid ponies of their cutie marks to bring equality? Some say, she's the same character. 2012 Best Pony Poll In 2012, Hasbro held an election on their website, where fans could vote on who they thought was the best of the main six. And yes, Fluttershy did win. 4chan Anniversary Stream Once a year, every week around October 10th, the MLP board hosts an anniversary stream. During the stream, they'll play every episode of the show in order, as well as request your goals and anything else that's canon, like Rainbow Road Trip and stuff like that, as well as have intermissions for fan-made videos, popular memes, stuff like that. If you want to learn about some memes and great fandom videos, that's a great place to find out. One of my videos was featured on that stream, without my knowledge, and everyone asked to skip it. Good. Can you imagine if they try to play this video? Those <laughs> The videos they play are supposed to be like 15 seconds long. This is a uh, 15 hours long. Starlight was a communist, so bronies are pretty known for their ineptitude with politics. So when they saw that Starlight was trying to make everyone equal by taking away things that made her them special, they thought it was communism, which is just, you know, it isn't. But M.A. Larson, the person who wrote the episode, seemed to lean into that idea by wearing a Russian hat and drinking vodka, as well as some of the posters during the Sunrise Festival in a later episode resembling that of communist propaganda art. Really. HANDS The word hands or hand is said many times in the show. Oftentimes it's said, give me a hand. However, we also get an image of Pinkie Pie wearing a foam finger many times. Where? Where did they get that design from? It would be a little bit more permissible, but in a question girls, you know, they have hands, and Twilight uses the word hands, and they're like, what are hands? Rainbow Dash, you know what hands are. You've seen them, and you've talked about them. All right, that's the end of layer three, finally. Jesus Christ. This video is not only really long, but it's taking really long to make, which I know it would, but Jesus Christ, I, I just wanna work on something else, please God. I've never worked on a project this big before, and uh, frankly, I'm not prepared for it. <laughs> something that's been bothering me as I like rewatch this video over and over and over again is the fact that the criteria for what belongs on this iceberg and what doesn't belong in this iceberg is really undefined. Like, why is Rarity being a marshmallow on this list, but Flutter Tree isn't? Seriously, it bothers me. But you know what? I don't want to fix it. I really do not, I don't feel like it. While I was editing this layer, the Never Ever video, like, hit the algorithm. And because of that, people were watching my moon theory, and they were throwing some nice ideas into the mix. And I want to, I want to revise that, but I can't because I'm working on this. So much for learning to play the violin, Jesus Christ. I was supposed to schedule a doctor's appointment a month ago, and I still haven't gotten to it. You mother better like and subscribe. <laughs> All right, I'm rambling too much. Layer four time. I can't believe you watched an hour of this video. Well, here we are, Layer 4, the place for only the most obscure things the fandom has to offer. Except for the first bullet point, I meant to put that in Layer 3, but I didn't. So... Losers. In the Season 1 episode, Party of One, a pile of rocks is heard saying the word losers. Because of that, the episode never aired in Canada as it got banned. Hey, guess what also should have been on the third layer? Fan-made games. I can't believe I let this one slip through the cracks. We talked about fighting is magic, but there's other fan-made games, and I think all of them deserve at least some sort of mention. So yeah, the fandom has made lots of games. Uh, very notable ones include Legends of Equestria and Equestria at War. The Illuminati. In the Season 2 episode, Family Appreciation Day, you can see Illuminati symbolism in the background of the flashback in the episode. Is Celestia a part of the Illuminati? Political messages. Okay, I don't really know what I plan to say here, but I wrote it down and I don't feel like looking it up, so the My Little Pony says no to racism. Dark Skies. Dark Skies is a fake My Little Pony centered dating sim created by the comedian Sam Hyde. You may have heard of him. Maybe not though. A Kickstarter was created to fund this video game. Uh, and it reached over $4,000 before it was shut down and revealed to be a scam. 
And I'm the smartest pony in the whole school. Um, I'm Trickstar. And you'd better get away from here, because if the other ponies catch you talking to me, they'll probably make fun of you. Because I'm the guy that they always make fun of. Celestia Statue Garden. In the season 2 premiere, Return of Harmony, Discord is seen breaking from his stone prison so that he can be the villain of the episode. However, Discord is not the only statue in that garden. Are those other statues secretly living ponies? The Brony Prophet. It's just this video of a guy saying he's excited for the new generation of My Little Pony. The reason he's excited is because he believes if the show is good, it could bring about a new era for cartoons. And he was right, My Little Pony Generation 4 was one of the contributing shows to the cartoon renaissance of the 2010s. The name The Brony Prophet was given to him by none other than Saberspark. So a new season of the My Little Pony cartoon show was announced over Comic-Con, I'm kind of actually pretty excited about this. Is because My Little Pony in spirit comes from a very different era of cartoon design than what we're in currently. Now I'd be very interested in knowing what kind of messages they're going to try to get across given the 22 year time difference, but I'm excited. If little girls can have their Saturday morning ponies, I think that can have a pretty big snowball effect and lead to potentially a lot of changes in the way that networks do a lot of their cartoon programming. Now of course we have to hope that the show is actually good, but I'm holding out hope. I'm holding on a lot of hope up early and run downstairs and, you know, catch up on the latest episode of the show that you want to watch every week. But all that has to start up again somewhere, somehow. And might as well be with the pony. I've got a lot riding on you ponies. I'll see you tomorrow. Seasons 4 to 9 are not canon. This also technically includes the season 3 finale where Twilight gets her wings. There's a number of fans, and they're hard to count because some of them are probably just joking, that were very unhappy with Twilight getting wings. So the real canon is that she never got wings, and seasons 4 to 9 are just not canon. Trans ponies! So no character in the show is canonically trans, but that doesn't stop the fans. Trixie's probably the most famous example, since Lauren originally wanted her to be a stallion, but she is instead, in the show, a mare. There's also whispers that Big Mac is a closeted trans femme, and that one scene where Twilight turns Applejack into a stallion. That was not real, but neither are cartoons. Straight Jacket Pony. Okay, I forgot what this was referring to, and looking up Straight Jacket Pony has only led me to very strange videos on the internet. So, I'm going to assume this is referring to the pony Screwy, who broke out of the hospital and started barking like a dog. The Commenter Dragon. Go under any video related to My Little Pony at all on YouTube and there is a good chance you will find the Commenter Dragon in the comment section of that video. Hell, look underneath this video if it gets popular enough. Random, random MLP video. Shut up. There he is! <laughs> literally... <laughs> literally took one minute. That's amazing. Fan Kid AUs. AU stands for Alternate Universe. Fan Kids refers to kids who are fans. Basically, kids creating OCs, alternate universes, and writing, drawing, whatever. Kinda cringy stuff most of the time, because it's kids, and kids on the internet are cringe. MLP Live. So MLP Live is an attempt at a live show featuring the main cast. This is official, by the way. This is Hasbro. The costumes are, I'm sure they put in a lot of effort. The costumes are terrible. They look awful. I can't speak to the story because I'm not sitting through this and also the audio is shit. But I can say that clip where the Twilight one falls off the stage is hilarious. Lauren Faust sold her soul. This is a theory primarily evolved from the fact that Lauren Faust's last name is Faust, and the famous story of Faust selling their soul to the devil. But think about it. Imagine she sold her soul in exchange for the show becoming very popular, but the devil twisted her words and the show became popular with bronies. You know, like the, like the worst possible thing that could happen. Hearts and Hooves Day Funeral. In the season 2 episode, Read It and Weep, we see a pony that looks like a cancer patient. In the very next episode, Hearts and Hooves Day, we see the first and only funeral in the show. Did the pony with cancer die? You know, Sweetie Belle interrupted that service by singing. Thomas the Tank Engine and Twilight Sparkle. The less popular of the posting Twilight ships, 
Twilight and Thomas the Tank Engine. Not much to it, just people shipping them. It's really weird. The 2008 Show Bible. So among the many leaks, the Show Bible, which the public was never meant to see, was found. And released, obviously. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there, like original concept arts for Trixie, where she was still a stallion. Oh my god, there's concept art of Rarity wearing a saddle. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to it. I highly recommend checking this out. There's a lot of cool sketches and concept art. Twilight was originally called Twilight Twinkle, which I recognize as a joke in the episode of Mending Fences when Moondancer calls her the wrong name. It was Spike is on all fours. Okay, moving on. They used to call it Apple Bonking. <laughs> Imagine there's an episode where they play Bonk Ball. <laughs> pilot episode. So along with the show Bible, the pilot episode was also leaked. It's a two minute short featuring Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Twilight, all voiced by Tara Strong, and it resembles the episode Feeling Pinky Keen. I had a funny twitch in my tail, and that always means something will be falling out of the sky. Oh, Pinky, do you really think a tail twitch is a reliable sign for rain? Look out below! Lauren Faust's inspiration. Lauren Faust's inspiration for the characters in the show came from her playing with the My Little Pony toys in the 80s. She would make up personalities for the characters based on the little pictures on their butt. In Gen 4, they're called cutie marks and they're integral to who the pony is. Sweetie Belle is Rarity's kid. This is just another dumb theory, but I figured I, I, I discluded a lot of really stupid theories from this list, but I have to include some. So there's a theory that Sweetie Belle is secretly Rarity's kid and that she must keep the secret from them, but we see Rarity's parents very early on, so there's it's just dumb. It's stupid. Canon books. So there are a couple books that are actually canon to the Generation 4 show. Most notably this one where we learn that Cadence was actually a Pegasus before becoming an Alicorn. I still haven't read it, but it exists. There's also the Journal of the Two Sisters, which used to be canon back in like season 4, but then was made not canon in season 6 when Luna revealed that no Alicorn has ever been born. Also, it was even further made not canon in season 7 when they reintroduced Star Swirl. Las Vegas Unicon 2013. Okay, I guess it was technically called Las Pegasus because that's what they called it in the show, but whatever. Las Vegas Unicon is sort of like the brony equivalent to Dashcon, if you ever heard of it. Basically, it was terrible. <laughs> the whole thing was a mess from organization to not paying anybody to having a fire alarm getting pulled and everyone had to evacuate. Once the hotel realized they weren't getting paid, they kicked everyone out. And worst of all, it was in <coughs> fucking Las Vegas. My Little Pony's supposed to be a family friendly show. Why would you have a con in Las Vegas? I haven't committed to memory everything that went wrong, but I recommend you check out the full story on some other YouTube video. Speaking of con disasters, fire alarms, don't jump. So there have been many fires slash fire alarms pulled at cons in the past. I think it was BronyCon 2012, but I could be wrong about that, where fluorescent lights started to like catch on fire in the main hall and they had to evacuate the whole building. Don't Jump refers to another con, I don't remember the name of it, where during the concert, the people in the audience were told to not jump because they were afraid the floor was going to give out. Not salmon. Okay, I had to look this up, I forgot what this was, but this is just cursed animations or images of My Little Pony. Here's an example. I don't know how to describe this. Flash Century is dead. Okay, I'm not 100% sure about this one, but I assume this goes into the theory that Flash Century in Equestria is actually the Flash Century from Equestria Girls, and that he killed the other Flash Century in order to help uh, Sunset Shimmer steal the crown. Or, I think think Bronies just wanted to see Flash Sentry die. Star Swirl planned everything. This is another one of the really stupid theories that I still included. Theory goes that Star Swirl the Bearded planned everything, from Nightmare Moon returning and Twilight becoming an alicorn, to eventually him returning. It's no, it's dumb. Dumb, bad theory. Bye. Here's a better theory. Discord is Star Swirl. There was a theory back in the day by Sawtooth Waves that stated Discord is secretly Star Swirl the Bearded, or Star Swirl the Bearded was Discord. You get the idea. This theory was finally disproved when Star Swirl actually appeared, but it was a pretty popular theory at the time. Discord is Grogar. So nothing on this list is in order, but I, I did try to put things that were somewhat related together. Discord is Grogar. This is just kind of a fact, because in Season 9, Discord was actually pretending to be Grogar, but perhaps he was the original Grogar. No, he's not. That's a dumb theory. But I thought I'd include it. Discord was Grogar? Like the whole time. Equestria Girls is based on Jajinkas. 
Okay, so Jajinka is a trend of creating human-like characters based on non-human subjects, including inanimate objects, animals, brands, or concepts. So technically, creating women from horses does count as a Jajinka, but as we all know, Equestria Girls exists because they wanted to sell Monster High toys. The Diamond Dogs were rappers, so the original concept for the Diamond Dogs was to have them be like hip-hop rappers, you know, very stereotypical, like, in the hood, kinda really glad they didn't go through with this. Spooky Jack. This sounds like a creepypasta, and it's not, but it might as well be. Spooky Jack is just this, oh, this costume, man. This video, just watch it, okay? This is what I'm referring to. This is Spooky Jack. <laughs> The Sombra ex Celestia ship. There's really not much to this. People just shipping Sombra and Celestia. I guess with their whole like king and queen spit, you know? How they they had a past, they had a history. The Crystal Empire returned. Oh no, like my ex. The Mean Six original edit was censored. So the entirety of season eight was leaked, right? Except they were early versions of what was released to the public. So fans watched the original edits of everything, and then when it was released, they watched that as well, and they noticed that in the episode The Mean Six, while the copycast was being melted alive, it was censored. Censored and it's less scary now. It looks pretty much the same, and there's really no reason for people to complain, but as you know, that's what bronies do best. The baby cake's real parents. So Mr. and Mrs. Cake are earth ponies, but their children are a unicorn and a pegasus. Mr. Cake explains that it makes sense because they have relatives who are unicorns and pegasi, but he seems a little nervous and unsure of himself. Uh, that makes sense, right? King Vorak. King Vorak is the name of T-Rex's father. Apparently he had a presence in the comics, but as I've stated before, I know nothing about the comics. However, Discord did allude to him in the season 9 finale. King Vorak? What happened to Scorpan? Scorpan is T-Rex's brother, and apparently he betrayed his brother in order to alert the ponies that T-Rex had malicious intentions. But we never see Scorpan outside of characters talking about him and the story about him. Did T-Rex kill him? Maybe, but we'll never know. Luna's life on the moon. So Luna was imprisoned in slash on the moon for a thousand years, but what does that mean? Was she just like prancing away on the surface or just like chilling out all alone, kicking the dust? Or was she like in a metaphysical like limbo like Star Swirl was? Pinky's timeline. So throughout the show, Pinky seems to have this chaotic energy about her. Like she has more control than she really lets on to. Now, in the season 9 finale, Pinky gets a hold of Grogar's bell, which contains Discord's magic, and she briefly holds on to it for a little bit. Perhaps because she did that, it altered her entire timeline, giving her crazy powers for her entire life. Or maybe, we're just looking too far into it. I miss my brother. Okay, I had to look this one up. It looks like there's an episode of Pony Life called Death of a Sales Pony, where Pinkie Pie mentions that she misses her brother. The exact line is this. The Storm King was originally T-Rex, so the Storm King is the villain in the My Little Pony 2017 movie, and he resembles T-Rex. Now I don't know if the show staff originally planned to have T-Rex as the villain, but he's not, so. Where are the zebras and buffalo? Zakora is told to be from a faraway land, but throughout the show we go to faraway lands and we never see another zebra. Same goes with the buffalo. Well, the buffalo are different. We know where they are, we just never see them again. Hourglass cutie mark. So early on in the show, there were only so many background ponies and cutie marks that the artists had picked out for the background characters. One of which that was very common is the hourglass cutie mark. Now I know we already talked about Dr. Hooves and Minuet and them having the same cutie mark, but since there are so many other background ponies, there was a theory that you would get an hourglass cutie mark if you were like figuring out your life or whatever. Disproved, but... CWC, or Christian Weston Chandler, was the first brony. If you don't know who CWC is, boy have I just opened a can of worms for you to dig into. Pretty much the entirety of CWC's life has been documented on the internet, and it turns out that she was a fan of My Little Pony before it was cool. Is Chris Chan the first brony? Perhaps. However, one of the guys that like made the toys for the 80s show claims that he was the first brony, so who knows. 
CWC cameo in the show. Yes, we're still talking about Christian. In the Season 7 episode, Once Upon a Zeppelin, there's a background pony that strangely resembles CWC and her parents. Now, the animators denied this, but it is a very uncanny resemblance. Discord's Origins. Now, Discord's Origins in real life is Lauren Faust coming up with him to represent a creature of chaos. However, in the show, we don't really know. How was he created? Was he born? Is he cursed? Is he a god? Some say that Grogar created him, as Discord pretending to be Grogar claims that he created creatures like the Bugbear and uh, the Chimera. So maybe Discord was one of Grogar's creations. Applejack's parents are related to each other. See, Applejack's parents are an apple and a pear, but the fruits, apples, and pears are like related to each other, like genetically. So are Applejack's parents related? Are they like cousins? Personally, I think that makes a lot of sense, seeing as how they grew up on a farm and have southern accents. <laughs> sunset killed her human self. The Sunset Shimmer in Equestria Girls is the Sunset Shimmer from Equestria, but obviously that means that there's a Sunset Shimmer from the human world. Did Pony Sunset kill her human counterpart? Pony Life Fanbase Purge. Pony Life seems very interested in having an audience of younger fans, what with the short episodes and haha lol random funny nature of the show. Some upset fans theorize that it was created in order to purge the fanbase, get people uninterested in My Little Pony and stop looking at it. Christianity. I'm really not sure. I guess this sort of relates to how the morals of the show seem to reflect Christian morals, maybe? This one's a bit of a mystery, but it does remind me that the show really kind of treats friendship like a religion. Like, Twilight made a school of friendship. Doesn't that, doesn't that like ring a bell? Like, like Catholic schools? Well, at least friendship isn't homophobic. Unlike some of those fans, am I right? Up top. The seventh element of harmony. There are six elements of harmony, but there's often other characters that accompany the main cast, like Starlight, Spike, Sunset Shimmer. Fans like to theorize what their element of harmony would be. Sunset Shimmer is famously known as the element of empathy, Spike as the element of loyalty, and Starlight Glimmer as the element of... Uh forgiveness, I guess. At least it ties back into the Christianity thing, am I right? Up top. Main six, mental disorders. The theory states that each of the main six represent a different mental disorder. Like Fluttershy being anxiety, Twilight OCD, blah blah blah, I'm not doing the whole thing. Everything is connected, slash the Pixar theory of My Little Pony. The inevitable theory that must exist in every franchise. It states that everything from Gen 1 to Gen 2 to Gen 3 to Gen 4 is connected, which it isn't, so moving on. A lot of these stupid theories are here just to make the iceberg look like, oh, whoa, everything is connected? No, it's not. Tomb face, a very obscure meme. It's just an image of the living tombstone's face. It's not much to it. Ponies shit on the ground. There's this really awful tweet, or maybe it's not a tweet, it might just be a forum post by Lauren Faust, stating that all the ponies shit on the ground and fertilize the crops, which doesn't happen. It's, it doesn't happen. Also, car shut up. The marijuana cake. There was this poor woman who wanted a Moana cake, but the Dairy Queen employee misheard her as marijuana, and so they made her a marijuana cake, but included like a weed pony. So now it's a My Little Pony thing. It is funny. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the cake Kensley Davis got for her 25th birthday with a marijuana leaf and My Little Pony smoking pot. What's so funny about it? Well, the employees apparently heard marijuana when mm. Davis's mom asked for Moana. Larson wrote cupcakes. We're going to talk about cupcakes in a sec, but basically there's a theory that M.A. Larson wrote it. He didn't. It's just a theory. Moving on. Anime opening. While there are some fan animations for anime openings, there's a lesser known official one for the Japanese dub of the show. It's completely different from the original opening and also much longer. It resembles that of other animated Japanese TV shows, or as we call it, anime. That's the end of Layer 4, and wow, I can't believe you're still here. Seriously, thank you for watching this much. I worked not that hard on this video, but it's taken a long time, and I'm glad it's not going to waste, essentially. Uh, so the question you have to ask yourself now is, why haven't you subscribed yet? If this does well, I'll make more, you know? That's, that's how it, that's, that's, that's how it goes. Alright, the fifth layer. 
Content warning, official, if you're under 18, go away. If you don't like anything that's grim, offensive, or sexual, go away. We will be talking about pedophiles. If you don't like that, go away. If you are a pedophile, go away. All right, let's hop right into it. Starting with the grim stuff. Teleportation is death. I'm not sure why this is grim, but Sunset Shimmer killing her other self isn't. But basically, it's a theory that when you teleport, you die, and like, a clone of you spawns on the other end, with all your memories. This theory exists for every piece of fiction that has teleportation, really. Join us in Equestria. Just a popular image slash concept that states, if you kill yourself, you'll go to Equestria. While it's a popular theory, this was never made canon or confirmed by any show staff. Dead Girls Theory. It's a theory that the main six are all based off of dead girls from real life. However, it's also false, so we're not talking about it. Fluffies. So fluffies are these really adorable, fluffy little ponies, uh, and the community loves to do terrible, terrible things to them, like just, just awful torture. Trixie is suicidal. In the episode No Second Prances, Trixie befriends Starlight, but after that friendship seems to break off, Trixie attempts to shoot herself out of a cannon into the jaws of a manticore with the understanding that Starlight's no longer helping her and that this will result in her death. She's obviously saved last minute though. Luna Game Luna Game, I'm reading this off the wiki, Luna Game refers to a series of short simple video games that appear to be simple platformers at first before locking up and presenting the player with creepy text and images. Other horror games, there's many other horror games that were made based around My Little Pony. Another one is Story of the Blanks, which I played when I was 11. That was a mistake. Cupcakes, Rainbow Factory, and other grimdark fix. Cupcakes is a story about Pinkie Pie locking Rainbow Dash in her basement and like torturing her or something. And Rainbow Factory is about Scootaloo failing a test and now she must be d killed and turned into rainbows. There's a ton of grimdark fix like uh, Sweet Apple Massacre, but there's only so many times I can tell you that a pony grabs a knife and starts killing other ponies. So let's talk about Smile HD. Smile HD is a short animation by Mr. Davey, uh, which features Pinkie Pie going around and brutally murdering the cast with her own fists. I have never seen the entire video. Uh, the second I saw Twilight's head get ripped off when I was like 12, I clicked away. Mr. Davey was an animator on the show. I was gonna say that this is one of those really stupid theories, but technically it could be true. Smile HD had really good animation, like strangely good for its time, so some wonder that maybe Mr. Davey was an animator for the show. DWK. DWK is popular for his series Totally Legit Recap in which he would recap the episodes with his own spin, language, etc. It pretty quickly resembled an abridged series more than anything else. He was famous for his 4chan-esque humor, very unfiltered and self-deprecating. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's funny. Ariane the Nazi Pony. So you know how the fandom originated from 4chan? Yeah, that still lingers. Ariane's like this cute OC that's a Nazi. That's the extent. She's just a Nazi. People like drawing her saying or doing offensive things that you'd expect a Nazi to do. Toon Critic, Mando Pony, and others. Formerly horse famous people, they were discovered to be fucking pedophiles. There's more than just Toon and Mando, but we're focusing on them because they were the most famous. Toon Critic was a part of the analysis community, so analyzing episodes, stuff like that. Mando Pony was a musician. He worked on really famous songs that still hold up to this day. Great musician, terrible person, tales old as time. Pony.mov. The Pony.mov series is famous for its absurdly unchild friendly humor, as well as animation, and just the whole thing is just very out there. The animation was done by Hot Diggity Demon. Also, Rarity is voiced by Aaron Hansen. The Animated James Drama. So Animated James was a very popular animator. He made such videos as Rainbow Dash vs Sonic and every sequel to that video. A few songs, a few original series like Sea Students. However, somebody found some of his old work, uh, namely a comic where underage Sonic characters would like fart and stuff. It was, it was a fart fetish comic. So now everyone's bullying him for uh, having a fart fetish. He's also dating, I think a 17 year old and he was like 20 or something. I don't know. Forgive me, I don't care. So he discontinued his channel and left the face of the internet. But as I was making this video, he actually returned after being gone for four years. He made posts to his Twitter and his YouTube basically saying, hey, I'm alive, I'm sorry. And that he was working on himself to improve. Regarding Twilight Sparkle. 
Jin1515. It all started on a fateful day, when a man named Jin1515 defended Twilight Sparkle's honor under some porn, I think. A very lengthy comment titled regarding Twilight Sparkle. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, you can do that yourself. There's a whole rabbit hole with this guy though. So this dude is apparently married to his Twilight plush. Having a waifu is one thing. Having a plush that you bring everywhere that you can hear talk to you is another. And of course, this man is in a passionate, loving relationship with his wife Twilight Sparkle plush, and they have sex very often. In fact, that's what he was defending in that first post. Twilight's not into that fetish that you drew her in. Please stop. If you must know more, do not burden me with the responsibility of educating you. Kanashi Panda. Kanashi Panda is simply an animator. He made very popular videos for YouTube, uh, namely Friendship is Manly. However, he's one of those animators where you watch their video on YouTube and it's like, wow, this guy's really good. I wonder what else stuff he's done. And you find out that they make porn. Nothing wrong with it. Probably just the most famous example. No, no controversies either. Clopping. Clopping is essentially the My Little Pony variant of fapping. So masturbating to My Little Pony characters. Banned from Equestria. Banned from Equestria is a point-and-click clop game where you basically just goes around and has sex with all the characters. That's it. The Jar. If I didn't have to put this in the sexual category, it would be on the top layer. Didn't used to be a mainstream meme. This used to be our secret that we kept under the rug. Now it's out there, man. So, The Jar. One day, somebody decided to take their Rainbow Dash figurine, put it into a jar, and then they filled that jar with their own semen. Such a task took quite a while. Legitimately, it took years for this guy to fill up this jar, but when he finished, and he did finish, it was a moment of history. However, this journey was not without hiccups. You see, one day, when it was around half full, our valiant hero left the jar on the radiator overnight. Now, this heated the jar, boiling the Rainbow Dash figurine in this man's snow was this like, dark yellow color, and there were stains on it, and the volume was lessened, so we had to work even harder, and I do not want to imagine the smell, oh my god. When people say nothing is sacred, this is what they're referring to. Body pillows. Well, this is not exclusively a My Little Pony thing. Body pillows, well, body pillows are body pillows, but the sheets you put over them can have different characters on them, often not wearing clothes. They're very popular at conventions, and when the show had Rainbow Dash go to a Daring Do convention, they put Daring Do body pillows not just in the background, but the foreground. If you're wondering, yes, parents did get angry. The Happy Birthday Tara cake. Tara Strong got a cake for her birthday featuring Twilight Sparkle in a compromising position, and she put it on Twitter. The usual. So there's a spa in the show, and the many ponies go to the spa and request that they get the usual. Uh, does that mean like a blow draw? Princess Molestia. Princess Molestia is an alternate version of Princess Celestia who is very horny. Comics, fix, art, and much more followed from the creation of Molestia. It got pretty bad to the point where it was very easy for children to find this character, and so there was a campaign to like stop Princess Molestia. Obviously it didn't work, it just made the problem worse. Molestia is often depicted with either pink or gray hair, so pink haired Celestia. That's that this is this is the the rest of that. Clop fix. This one's pretty easy to figure out for yourself, but a clop fic is just a fanfic, well, a smut fic about My Little Pony character. Saddles. So you know how I mentioned Rarity wearing a saddle in the show Bible is really weird? Okay, here's why. See, early on, the, the show staff thought, you know, the fashion would be saddles and whatnot, but then they realized, we want this to be less coarse and more human. So then they're like, okay, what are all these saddles in Rarity's boutique for? Oh. So they officially decided that saddles were definitely a sex thing, and that's why they stopped you stop seeing them in the background. But they never truly left the background. No, they're still there. The fandom is a cesspool of pedos. This is a stereotype uh, that states all bronies or pedophiles. It's not true, but there are some who make it true. I want to not read this one. Popular meme on 4chan, often attributed with this image. Uh... Really just real classy, guys. My little porny fucking is magic. Apparently there's a feature-length porn parody of people dressed as the characters from My Little Pony and they all have sex together. Wonderful, wonderful, glad I know that. Stellar Eclipse controversy. We talked about Stellar Eclipse earlier, but the controversy surrounding this 
Make-A-Wish Kids OC is that people made porn of this character. And there was never another Make-A-Wish Kid on the show ever again. The Lyra Plush. The Lyra Plush is not the only plush with a suspicious hole in its backside, but it's definitely the most famous. And I described it already. They're plushes with suspiciously sized holes in their backside. But the Lyra Plush actually got signed by Lauren Faust herself. Characters that have canonically had sex. The characters of My Little Pony reproduce sexually, just like normal horses would. This was confirmed by show staff, by the way, just in case there were any doubters in the audience. So basically, every character that is responsible for the uh, creation of a child has canonically had sex. This includes Cheese Sandwich, Pinkie Pie, Mr. and Mrs. Cake. However, Mr. Cake may not be the father, so maybe he did. Maybe he did. And there's probably more, but I'm gonna stop thinking about this. The Milk Mare. The Milk Mare is an OC that's yellow with blue hair and really big. T there is so much porn of this character. Also, there's a pony that looks like her in the background, so maybe she's not an OC? Listen, my internet history is bad enough as it is right now. I'm not looking this up. I really don't want to make it worse. What the fuck? Is that my OC? Apparently this is the OC of General Mumble on Twitter. Cool. Okay, this shit just keeps getting deeper. Okay, so the only two OCs that I've ever seen that share resemblance to mine are Blue Label, some random OC I saw on Amino years ago, which I don't have a picture of, and that Pinkie Pie clone from that One Living Tombstone song. Yeah, turns out that Pinkie Pie clone is because of General Mumble. I didn't steal your OC, all right? I designed this after the Stardust armor in Terraria. Please don't sue me. <laughs> didn't know I had a long lost brother. Big Mac incest arc. In the episode Hearthbreakers, the Apple family goes to the Pie family's farm for hearthwarming. The reason they're doing this is A, they're friends, but also their families may be related. In the episode Pinky Apple Pie, Pinky discovers that she may be related to Applejack, they go to check, and the answer is vague. That's just it! I don't know! The page is all smudged! However, it is heavily implied that they are related. Why does all this matter? Well, it's because Big Mac falls in love with Marble Pie, and vice versa. Aren't they... Aren't, aren't they cousins? <laughs> yeah, so the second the show staff figures this out, they're like, Oh, wait, hold on. Let's, uh, uh, fuck, uh. And those two seconds are probably the most heartbreaking in the entire show. They loved each other, but the rules about incest on children's programming had other plans. The Tosh O segment. Now, I have no idea who the hell this dude is or what program he's... Oh, it's on Comedy Central. Anyway, the, the point is, this dude had uncensored clop art on television. I want to know, how the fuck did this pass? What? And the last thing on the list, wing boners. Finally, I get to talk about wing boners. <laughs> the inspiration for this iceberg was because the other iceberg I saw didn't include wing boners. And I said, damn it, I need to, I need to make this right. So here we go. Whenever a Pegasus gets excited in any way, their wings spike up involuntarily. When that excitement is arousal, it is referred to as a wing boner. The first documented evidence of a wing boner is in the episode Over a Barrel. We see a shot of the audience, Rainbow Dash has her wings folded, and then we see a shot of Pinkie Pie coming out of her like clam thing, and Rainbow Dash in the next shot is seen with wings furled up. That must mean that she got a wing boner because of Pinkie Pie. That also means she's gay! And that finally concludes the My Little Pony Generation 4 Iceberg. Don't say, I didn't warn you. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. It honestly means a lot. I started this project four months ago and expected to finish in one month. That was wrong. For the first month, I worked pretty much non-stop on this thing, and I managed to finish the first three layers, but then I got a lot of burnout, and then I, like, procrastinated and didn't work on it at all for, like, two months. But I really want to get it out before I fly to Utah. So, I'm gonna finish up this recording and put it in, and then put the music in, and then polish, and then, and then be done with this video. Please share, like, and subscribe. Okay, thank you, bye.